want to be working on the face. Um, so I've already applied a, a base of a mix of Bugman's Glow and uh, Cadian Flesh Stone. It's probably about 50-50 if I'm honest. And I added two thin coats. Um, and then just for the hair, I've added in a very watered down cheap brown paint, um, <clears throat> which I've layered on you know, quite quite thickly over the hair. And then I've just dabbled on, like just stabbed on with a slightly dry brush over the eyebrows, uh, tash and mustache um, and beard as well. So now I want to um, I just apply a wash. So for that, I've decided, you know, again, he's, he's pretty beaten and torn so I want to get his skin a bit worn in certain areas um, but at the same time I also want to add some red in, in quite specific areas so in the um, film he ends up with a cut along here quite a big scratch upon his forehead um, and then the typical kind of nose and ears are always a bit more red so uh, for that I've got my Cabo Crimson Shade and my Right Flesh Shade so of course um, and I'm going to start with the Right Flesh Shade for the skin uh, Water it down a little bit, as I've always said, I think right and flesh shade is just a bit too heavy. And for that, I'm then going to apply this over the entire head. Oh, sorry, not the entire head, the entire face, all the skin area. So I just find having the um, eyebrows and the, the beard and everything in place just kind of helps me know what I'm working with. Um, I do want to just get this over everything just quickly for the sake of filming. Some of the back areas I'm not too worried about because I'll be going over the hair with the Agrax Earthshade and that will kind of neaten itself up. Um, I want to add it in liberally here just so I can get a, um, a really clear line so I just know where I need to neaten up around the neck uh, for the weapon. Oh sorry, for the weapon, for the bloody um, the armour. Just, uh, just get a bit of these pulls out of the way. Okay, so now I want to get some of the red again uh, watered down because I think it's another one that I find a bit stark. Um, touching into the ears a bit, onto the nose, onto that kind of area where I feel like the cut's going to be. Now I just want to get some water and just uh, blend it out a bit just so it's not so heavy in that area. Oh, sorry. Wait, sorry if that wasn't an, an angle, but essentially I'm just, um, you can see it's pretty much just a wash, but I'm kind of just adding a bit of the red tone in as well. I'm just trying to use water to sort of blend it out into the flesh wash. Just decided to do a uh, second coat with exactly the same process, so just applied the right and flesh shade. Now I'm just adding over a little bit of red here and there. So that will pretty much not be noticeable once I go over with a bit of a dry brush. Um, but I just wanted to get some of that, that deeper red tone into the skin um, before I add the bruising. Shade dry now and I've put some blue tack just around for uh, risk management. Um, now I've got some Cadian Flesh Tone um, on a dry brush. And I'm just trying to now um, just bring up some of that colour in the face before I add in uh, the layers. Just find it can really help to identify, you know, where the grooves are a little bit better. So I'll go around the whole of the face with the Cadian Flesh Tone. So I went over with a second uh, dry brush on the face uh, with the Cadian Flesh Tone. I've now got a uh, watered down Cadian Flesh Tone. I just want to start picking up some of these areas where it's a bit more watered down than that. Uh, start picking out some of these areas where I feel <clears throat> the dry brush has missed, or at least try and thicken out some of the areas um, where the dry brush has hit as well, particularly towards the centre. Sorry.
I'm gonna start thickening out like areas like the forehead. As I said, I don't really like that dry brush effect when you know you're trying to get a strong light source on it. So I'll just go and go around with the um, watered down Cadian flesh tone and just finish off uh, the first layer. Finished the first layer now. Um, you can see it's starting to add in some of that shape um, whilst not looking like it's being dry brushed. If that makes any sense. Um, so now, before I go on to the the final layer on the skin, I just want to do the eyes. Just make my life a bit easier when I'm then going around with the skin to neaten up. I have based the eyes now with a Panage Witch flesh and a. A uh, bit of a cheaper acrylic, uh, white. And I've now got for the iris of the eye, um, I've got Mournfang Brown and Scrag Brown. So just to start off with, just on the Mournfang Brown, I just want to um, cover the entire of the iris shape. Lucky again with this model, it is um, predefined. So I, I personally prefer those. I find it's just a bit more you can do with the, uh, the colors. Of course, though, it does limit you on direction of the look. See, I haven't done a great job in basing this, but I wanted to make sure I had a clear cover and then I can clean up afterwards. Now as that's drying, I want to try and get that, it into the center um, and slightly up to the, the right. So this is the scrag brown. If I can just get that in, create a bit of a highlight tone to the eye. wasn't just light enough so <clears throat> I mix some white into the scrag brown I'm just going to start touching the corner of this brown with it as well okay you really see it's looking a mess I want to be honest about it never great with eyes so I prefer to over cover get the eye how I want it and then just neaten up afterwards it does look a bit crazy at the moment the pupil, I feel like I can bring those colours together. So I've got some slightly watered down Agrax Earth Shade. I just want to drop it into this space very thinly, just kind of help bring these colours together. Um, so I'll, I'll take it off in a second. Whilst I've also got it, I want to use it to help just work out the line of the eye. So I can just use that to layer uh, between the eyelids. I'm here, I'm waiting for that to dry, and before I add the uh, the pupil, I just thought I'd just quickly start the uh, the neating up process. Said hopefully I won't uh, mess the black up black dot up that much. Uh, he says that now. Decided I wanted him looking straight forward. Um, I've got my black paint, and I've got it tilted it a bit closer to me, so I'll do my best trying to get this on camera. Um, but I think it matters more getting it right and having it at the right angle for me. Um, so I can just. See the the paint's quite watery, so I just want to drop it in and then just work my way around. Do you need to be bigger than that? Okay, that's much better. So I now want to add in a red wash, just because you know I think considering the situation, there'd be quite a bit of bloodshot in the eye. Um, just worth noting that I have done a bit of extra neating up around the eye, so I feel like I'm happy with the, the skin around it before I add this red wash. Um, and so same again with the Agrax, I want to kind of go around the edges as before. Um, oops, I put too much on the skin there. Uh, but when I hit this corner, I kind of just want to add in a little line if possible not much it should just at that sort of level make it seem a little more bloodshot so so again if i just go to this corner bring out both lines and just kind of if i can create a bit of a bloodshot effect there so just whilst that's drying um i'm now going to quickly go around with the uh the brown and just touch up the eyebrows and the beard 
uh, just so when I'm working on the final layer, uh, I think I just find it a lot easier to know uh, where the whole face is. Um, otherwise, I, I feel like I end up adding too much colour right next to the, the brow, where I feel like there should be a bit more shade. So, just by adding this in, I feel like it makes my life a bit easier. Last I was here and had the red wash, um, I've got a very watered down red wash. I'm just applying that over the lips. And just hopefully to give that a little bit more of a uh, red tint. God damn! So, you might have seen I made a bit of a mess. Um, it happens move on <laughs> silver lining it didn't impact the model so um i've now got some uh, key slayer flesh and i've watered it down with a bit of um airbrush thinner and i just want to add the final coat of the skin before we move on to the the bruising and scars so this is just going to be really just trying to bring out the highest points so as always sort of center of the nose um top of the brow and again I've just sort of noticed in the pictures I mean you'd expect a lot of light is going to come off an infinity stone so I just want to start building up the brow as well okay so I think I've brought the face up now but um, as I'm going to be adding bruising and cuts I kind of want to bring it back down with a bit of a, a deeper um, a deeper look and also some red in there so I'm going to get my right confess shape but probably 50 50 of water maybe even a little bit more um, just thinning it out and then just apply a really thin coat over everything on the face excluding the eye uh, eyes are. Now the skin is starting to look a bit more battered now and uh, probably here the weather is it's getting uh, pretty bad outside but uh, I've just got now some I've got some pink screamer uh, which is essentially like I'd normally use a purple for uh, bruising but dark pink can work really well as well so I've just got this, probably was a dry, a dry rush a long time ago, now it's just essentially just some soft, well, just short bristles. Um, and I'm just using this to sort of pick out the key areas where I want extra rusing to be and where I'm going to be adding the blood. I will kind of hit some other spots as well, because, you know, it's, it's not like he just got hit in three places. Uh, I might have to stop this now just because it's really pelting outside. Um, <coughs> But yeah, you kind of get the gist. I'm just going around and getting this uh, um, this this uh, scream of pink all over the areas I really want to bring out a bruise. So now, just before I add in the the blood effect paint, um, I've just got some corn red. Um, I find it's just like the darkest red possible it helps to simulate um, simulate the scars. So apologies for the, the thunder and storms outside. Um, so I just want to kind of just add in where the scars are. Just a very very thin line where essentially I want it to begin. I don't mind it being a bit, a bit over the top. Um, so when I add the blood over it, it should just help to kind of identify that like, the most sort of prominent area where he's been cut. Okay. Right. Now red for the blood. This is my favourite paint uh, purely because of the name, Blood for the Blood God. Just rolls off the tongue, um, and. Just on my small little brush, same before. Now I just want to start adding in the effect. Uh, as I said, looking at the pictures, I think the main cut is uh, above the eye. So I kind of want to again start it from that spot. Essentially seems like it really built up around that point and then sort of started dribbling its way down. So I'm happy to really go quite strong with this stuff. Um, and you can build it up as well, but I don't like putting it on too thin. Again, sometimes it's better just put on some and then come back once it's dry and see if you want to add some more. I felt like the, the cut in his head was quite actually big, like he had like an actual gash. Um, and again, the one under his, his other cheek was a bit more of a, just a sand cut. So I'll give it some, some parts that's dripping down as well. Okay. Um, look. I feel like that was really the extent where they were really pushing the blood. I'd say actually the, the cut here went a lot further down, really went down his face. Again, you don't just want it to be completely even, it's not just this is blood at the end of the day.
I rewatched the clip, um, so I'm feeling a bit emotional. Um, but I saw kind of there was an additional cut just above the eye. I thought there was a bit of continuity at some point, but that might just be me. Um, <clears throat> but I think I'm happy now with the, the blood on the, on the face. Uh, whilst that's still drying, I'm just going to quickly go back round and um, do the hair and the moustache and the eyebrows. Now I've done the hair and the facial hair. Didn't want to go right up to that line just because I'm hoping the shading will do that work for me. So um, I've got some Agrax Earth shade now. Um, for the, oh, sorry, the beard and the, the general facial hair, I want to be quite uh, watered down with it. So just want to kind of start hitting it slightly under the under the tash, maybe in there a bit as well to add some depth. Same again into the tash slightly on the edges as well so i'm just hoping to add a bit of shadowing and shade around those um around the, the facial hair same again for the eyebrows particularly underneath so getting more of the skin so there's there's more shade under the brow and now for the hair i'm just going to slap it on while all the uh, the wash on the hair is drying um i've just mixed up some uh, black wash so for me that's a black dipping formula and um and some water so I just I buy this sort of big black wash shade but I find it's very thick and glossy so I just mix it go about 50 50 um, and I just want to now go around this line between the neck and the armor uh, one just to create a much clearer division between the two colors but also I feel like as you can probably see uh, that the armor needs a bit of cleaning up so I'm just going to go around neatly now with a, with a smaller brush than I was using before, um, just to fill all those lines. Now, even this is all still drying, um, with a very little bit of uh, Mephiston like on my brush, so it's Mephiston red. Um, I just want to kind of get over the neck, just start just rubbing over it just to help neaten up some of that color division without adding too strong a red color to it. So it's kind of like a little mini mini dry brush in a way. Um, but I'm just gonna go around now and just make sure that this, this neck isn't as uh, scruffy as it were. So I've neatened uh, up the red. I might need to touch up a bit on the skin uh, once it, all the, the black is dried. Um, just whilst the washes are all still drying again, I've just got some uh, Citadel hard coat, which is, again I believe is just a, um, a gloss acrylic, and I just want to use this for the eyes. So I've got you know, a solid amount on my brush. Probably, that's probably a bit too much, to be honest. I just want to slap that over. Ideally, in just one nice coat. I know I did it in two there, but now I just want to add a little bit of a highlight to the hair. Um, it's already got it from the fact that I've uh, dry brushed with the skin and then put a really light brown over. So you've kind of, you kind of already see there's a bit of a highlight in there. Um, but I want to just add a bit more of a light brown to that. So I've got the scrag brown dry brush. I'm very lightly now more careful of the face really um, just going over the top and the sides just to bring out a bit more colour on the hair um, yeah I, I think honestly I'm I'm really happy with it so far um, I'm now just going to kind of quickly slap the base together um, and then reassess <laughs> 